everyone and welcome back to another video. Today it's going to be all about the flat rides, so adding a little bit more thrill to the theme park. Also adding another transport here to start with, with the ski lift, just to kind of give another way for guests to get up to the North Pole. And just right now figuring out layout, which was pretty simple, just going up and then starting theming it like we did with all the other rest, all the other buildings. And again, following the same thing, I did use more of the entrance style where we kind of have just like an overhang kind of flat roof on top just because I think that suit the ride better than a building. Kind of like the entrance, it, I did think it seemed a little flat on the roof, so I did want to put a little bit of the roofing pieces from the other builds onto here to give it a little bit more uh, more of a dynamic look. And I do end up raising that up a little bit to give it even more height, and I think that did help the look of the build a lot. Um, again, adding more trimming, trimming everywhere, and then there's usual details here and there with the frosting, or ice, and windows and garland. Kind of hide the supports of the ride. What I wanted to do, I just added these bricks in order to, or these brick columns, just to kind of hide them. They're still peeking out a little bit, but I do think they were, they uh, make the building look a lot more kind of in the theme and not just you know a building put on top of, of uh, put on top of a ride. So I think that's one of a, a really important thing when designing stuff for rides is just making sure it actually makes sense. A little bit of signage to complete the ride. A little more details and then I worked on the queue for a little bit. Just kind of used uh, the kind of same path as I have before and added some candy canes here and there. Speaking of candy canes, we are about to make a ginormous candy cane for another flat ride. Uh, you can kind of see it there. It's I know it as the Skyhawks from Cedar Point but I think it has a different name but I'm not entirely sure what it's actually called within the game. But I started making this pattern uh, in the in the game, just making a circle from circles, which was a little bit tiring, but it took a while to get right, just because there was no easy way to get a circle that's that thick for that size. So I just ended up using a whole bunch of custom shapes, and uh, most of them were squares. But even though it looks a little janky, I do think it looks pretty good, especially from a distance, you can't really tell. So all in all, these two candy canes combined is about 4,000 pieces, so, or no, 2,000, sorry. So quite a lot, but I do think they look pretty good. Now what we're doing, like the like every ride we will be doing today, we're going to add a little bit of theming to it. So just kind of surrounding the border just to make sure you can't see under it. Some more trimming as well. Trimming is one of the biggest things you can do to make your, uh, make anything in your park look really good. And then just adding some fencing after that as well, and all the usual festive details. Went for a bit of a different type of fencing on this one, just to kind of switch it up a little bit from what we usually use, give it a different feel, and added some of the in-game candy canes around the fencing to theme it a little bit better to a candy cane. Once we placed a few buildings down, I to kind of have an idea of where I wanted this area to be headed, or like what the layout of it would be, I uh, started doing some more path work, and my idea for this, I kind of had this idea when I was working on the candy cane, because I knew I wanted to do that candy cane for a while, 
And I was like, okay, what else can I do for these flat rides? So my idea for this was to create Candyland. So right here, starting on kind of what the game has as like a, you know, the, the rainbow road path. And just kind of started out all the same color, just using the pieces, making them wind left and right, back and forth, up and down the path. Sometimes splitting off here and there just to give it a little bit more interesting shapes. Um, but yeah, so this is what the this entire area is gonna kind of be like. It's gonna each ride's gonna have you know definitely some sugary theme, um, and then the obviously the path will have like a lollipop field, a candy cane field, cut by, by the big candy cane ride, um, and also a chocolate field as well. Now here I'm starting to recolor everything to the rainbow, and I was actually very happy because. Even though I split off a few times, I was able to get them all to line up pretty well. Have it, had some few long colors that looked a little bit that were a little bit more than what they were before, but all in all, turned out pretty good. So now placed a few that placed down a few flat rides. Most of them were normal spinning rides. Took me a while to figure out this one, but it was like every every theme park wants you know every theme park needs a needs to have a, a drop tower. So I ended up putting that one in as well recolored them a little bit so they looked a little bit more sugary and like more festive and holiday made the path go around a little bit so I, I could connect all the rides so I can get an idea on where the queue was going to be and the exits and everything and once that is done we will start theming Alright, and now what we're going to do is start working on the entrance for Can Zed Candyland. Now I kind of took this from the little bridge archway we built for the train ride. It took me a while to figure out what piece to use as they were all quite large and this is not the biggest tower. So I ended up finding these little cool uh, roofs that went to a point. Just kind of doubled up to make them the correct length. And just started putting holiday lights on there, holiday items, and uh, some sugary items as well to make it seem like you really were entering Candyland. Now using some jelly beans or jelly bellies, not entirely sure which ones they are, I started spelling out the word Candyland and then also colored those to the same colors as the path as well. I had to remake this arch a little bit just because it was a little bit too small. So once I did that, adjusted it, put it in the, into place, I could move the letters up onto their positions. Once that was all done, we copied it over to the other side, and then we're starting on the next part of this area. Since it is Candyland, I'm sure kids love candy, so I thought, since it also has some more tame flat rides compared to the coasters, we should have a little area for the kids to go. So what I'm working on now is something that I'm calling Ginger Park. So it kind of has like a gingerbread theme, and you can kind of see me making the entrance with some ginger, placing some gingerbread around. Now here I tried with some simple shapes to make a few rides, this one's just kind of the one that spins around as well and I also try to make a slide here in a second. There we go. Um, this is a small little slide but all in all I think it definitely gives off a playground vibe. I put some lanterns and do some paint work to make it a little bit rough because obviously the kids are going to be running around there stirring up the dirt in the, in the, in the snow. Put some rocks, some lollipops, just to kind of theme a little bit more. Yeah, I was very happy with the way that this turned out. My idea for these was these were kind of benches for the parents to sit while they're watching for their kids. Then obviously making the entrance a little bit more, uh, not more, uh, just give, making it more recognizable to make sure, so that way people know that this is actually a park. Right. 
now since that's mostly done with everything uh, basic. We're going to start adding some more details uh, starting with the fencing around the path. I'm only going to show this one side just because it's basically the same thing over and over again on the other side. We use the same fencing as I did for the uh, Kenny Kane ride and just put the Kenny Canes all over the place. And for the exits of all the rides, I kind of used the colors that I selected for them to and put lollipops in the ground, which I think was actually a really good look. And I just used these Jolly Rancher things. Not Jolly Ranchers, like sour gummies, and outlined them. Outlined all the entrance cues and themed those to the correct colors as well. Now, for the main attraction of this episode, we are going to be working on what is called the refinery. Now, we kind of discussed the the theming of the crystals being the power of the North Pole. This is kind of elaborating on that as well. Basically what it's going to be is a refinery for where the mined crystals go to get processed so that way they can actually be, I guess, used to the most efficiency that the North Pole can. Um, so that's basically kind of the lore behind this building. Uh, in order to do that, we actually got to build it. And this is by far the biggest building that we, that I have made in this uh, series so far. It's absolutely massive, um, and the theming, these buildings take the longest just because there's so much space that you have to actually have to cover, but I think towards the end, it really comes together and has an actual really cool factory look, so I was very happy with the way that that turned out. Um, I'll just let you let the time lapse run as we build up this building. Right now that the basic building is about done, we're going to start theming it. Now, this is kind of the, this building seems to be more themed to this type than others, but what I, want to, what I want to do for a lot of the buildings in the near future is add a little bit of steampunk to all these buildings, because it is kind of like a workshop, so I think steampunk would really work. But obviously this one being the refinery, I think it needs to be very steampunk and have a lot of pipes and gears and just things moving around just to give it that factory kind of feel. So by doing, what we're adding is some pipes on the walls, this in every which direction that I, that I can think of. Adding some of the actual steampunk uh, pieces within the game, such as the gears, and I, those are actually like for, the things that are moving back and forth are actually for a train, but I think they work really well and they add a lot of motion to the building. Also adding these big kind of, I guess, I don't actually remember what they're called. They're like the big uh, containers, I guess you could say, that hold fluids. Did a little terrain work to make sure that it all worked out. And once we make sure all that's done on the outside, do a little bit of steampunking on the roof. Add a little bit of the bigger pipes on top as well. Just space them out. Just so that way the whole building looks steampunk. Also adding pipes on the inside now as well. And then my reference for this, because I did put the pipes in on the backside or on the outside, uh, they did 
go through the wall a little bit more so I kind of just started from those points and built out from there. I think that ended up working really well just to kind of hide the fact that they were coming out um, but also added a few more here and there going a few directions to make sure that it wasn't just those. Right, now we're going to start working on the interior, still st sticking to the st steampunk vibes, and the refinery. So adding a little bit more steampunk items there, and also some more, I guess, furnaces there. Um, and it looks like I forgot some pipes, so just copied those around. And now starting on the actual kind of factory layout. So obviously you want to have some caution strips, so put those down. Those are kind of outlining the queue, but in reality, those are, would just be there in the factory, um, but the queue just happens to go there. Who would have thought? Um, added some more pipes of the, of the bigger pipes. Uh, they don't really have any connection to the upper ones, but uh, my thought was I wanted to make like a conveyor belt that the crystals would be moved on, and that maybe those pipes is where the crystals came through, even though the ones that you see that me putting on the conveyor belt would no way fit through those pipes. Just call it some more North Pole magic, why not? Um, so I just used some, a lot of car tires and some of the trims that we've been using to kind of make these conveyor belts. And I actually really, really like the way that, that they turned out. I think they actually look like conveyor belts. And just added some general shipping and kind of factory materials such as pallets, uh, shipping containers, shipping crates. Also added some toy soldiers as I guess the employees of the factory or the, the, ref the refinery. Adding a few more gears and details on the inside as well. A little electro bo electrical boxes for the conveyor belts. A few more details here and there. And then we start adding the crystals. So what I want to do is just have them stacked up, recolor them, and I colored them to the color of the conveyor belts. I just thought that makes sense. Then on this side, we kind of have what the uh, crystals come in as. And then so we kind of have some crystals that were shipped in on that side, and then the ones that are ready to ship out on this side. Just kind of try to think about like, okay, how would a refinery like this work? Obviously, you'd have the crystals that come in, you'd go through the process and come out and get ready for shipment. And once we finished up the interior of that building, finished up all the keys and all the extra candy land, we were done. So enjoy the B-roll. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. That is going to be the end of this video. So happy with the way that Candyland turned out. I think it looks really cool. Adds a lot of color to the park. Also the refinery is so cool. It'll kind of set the theme on what we're doing for the actual factory on the other side of the park. Just got a few more details to do on this side. For next episode, we're going to be working on a whole bunch of coasters. Not one, not two, but three. So I will see you guys then. Bye!